We have uh, one more area, a uh, major system to actually look at in the brain itself. And um, it is basically the, um, uh, the, it's the limbic system. And most of the time, in most of your uh, operations, if you will, is that you use the limbic system quite a bit. And it is composed of various component parts uh, and limbic itself uh, oftentimes means uh, the border uh, and it runs actually along the border between the two hemispheres but it's made up of specific components uh, that I want to spend a little time talking about with you quickly quickly that seems to be a relative term with some of these videos because there's so much detail but the first one I want to work with or talk about is the amygdala. And I'm going to fill in this diagram down here so that we can just do this together. But uh, the amygdala. And the amygdala is this little structure down underneath. It's a, about uh, a, uh, <clears throat> a lima bean shaped uh, cluster. Um, and when we talk about uh, these, these structures themselves and what they have to do with each other is the, the amygdala itself uh, is, uh, has a lot to do with um, aggression and uh, the aspects having to do with fear. So uh, the amygdala, and I'll do this uh, so that uh, it's color coordinated. The amygdala has to do with fear and aggression, which, of course, I think to some degree, you probably have to ask uh, why, those particular, um, why those particular emotions, uh, fear and aggression. The reality is, is that when I'm afraid, the next possible thing that I have to consider is self-defense which is also part of aggression itself. So the amygdala is directly uh, connected to the, um, the, the fear and aggression. Um, you take a, uh, you get rid of the amygdala and what you have is a fair, fairly quiet, uh, like they said in, in the book, the monkey, it's calm. Um, non-responsive even to things that would might uh, threaten its safety. The other thing to keep in mind with the amygdala is the idea of emotional memories. Um, and like I said, uh, around, um, around here, uh, we've had people who are um, going through the replaying of the trauma of the shooting in Aurora. And the amygdala would be a good example of something that uh, would be very active during that kind of um, processing of memories and so forth. The second one, which we've already referred to and mentioned before, uh, is something that we talk about as being uh, the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, hypo, is always below. And so the, the uh, hypothalamus is hypo, I don't have no space with my thalamus. The, the, the nature of it is just below. Of course, you, you're, you're familiar with hypodermic, which is below the skin surface. Same thing is true with the hypothalamus. It's right in this structure right here that is below the thalamus, which is right here. So. Um, the the name for it uh, didn't uh, wasn't terribly creative. They found this little structure and they said it's below the thalamus, so let's just call it the hypothalamus, and that that makes perfect sense, of course. Um, whoops, I spelled this wrong. It should be U S uh, hypothalamus. Uh, the the key to understanding the hypothalamus itself uh, has to do with um, uh, first of all it it. Uh, governs all the bodily maintenance. So I'll put, th uh, whoops. Hypothalamus. 
hypothalamus, and uh, we're talking about bodily functions, um, body maintenance, if you will. Um, the the um, maintaining of various uh, levels within the body, uh, maintaining uh, the uh, internal steady state, if anything, maintenance, oops. Uh, if anything is off the hypothalamus, <clears throat> the blood glucose level is too low, for example, it sends signals out to the stomach to begin to growl and contract. So it has everything to do with regulating thirst, body temperature, uh, are all part of uh, the hypothalamus function uh, that uh, manages each of it in a sense. In a sense, you might think of this as kind of the thermostat, the body thermostat. It's monitoring all of these uh, systems to make sure that they are all uh, operational, that they're not falling too low or too high. And it, it uh, much like the thermostat in your house, where you set it to 72 degrees, if it gets too hot, it turns on the air conditioner, brings the temperature back down. Um, and in the winter, if you say it at 72 degrees and it, the temperature falls below 72, obviously your furnace goes on, bringing the temperature back up. And that's really very similar to the role that the hypothalamus plays um, in the overall system itself. Moving on, the next one beyond that uh, is uh, what we refer to as the uh, uh, the, the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland oftentimes is referred to as the, uh, the master gland, and it, it sends out all the necessary signals, that's this little structure right under here, uh, pituitary, and for, uh, for how small it is, it really uh, governs a lot of our uh, operations, if you will. So the pituitary gland, uh, like I said, is the master gland. It, uh, pituitary, um, and like I said, the, the uh, hypothalamus monitors all these other systems and then Essentially, it communicates with the pituitary to be able to send out the various hormones to where it actually needs to, uh, needs to go. So the pituitary gland is quite critical in um, operating, keeping the system actually moving and so forth. So major systems, the last one is on the outside and it looks a little bit like a horn um, and that one is the uh, down here, and this is this structure right in here, is the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is um, directly campus is directly related to memory storage and memory uh, uh, functioning. And so it makes sense, actually, when you start to think about it, it makes sense that, that the hippocampus uh, is going to be part of the overall limbic system because how many of our memories are in, imbued with emotion? For example, uh, if you remember, if you remember uh, where you were on 9-11, uh, that is not only the, the involvement of your uh, hippocampus, but it also obviously brings certain emotions along with it. So the hippocampus is, is quite key, and when we have destruction of that, then the person seems to live only in a sliver of time because they can't record a memory and, and um, uh, be able to remember kids' names and, and remember anything. The 9-11 the is a good example, which we'll talk about when we talk about memory, is uh, what we call a, a, fla whoops, a flashbulb memory. And 
it it seems like our suddenly our attention and everything else is focused on this one event and all the uh, all the memories and emotions that go with it come with it and it's like a flash bulb is going off and we remember that singular event and 9/11 is a good example of that. All right, one last thing. Uh, while we're talking about the older brain structures itself. And, and a diagram like this gives you a little bit more of an overview. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail with this since we've already done that. But what you see color-coded over here um, is the, the, the different systems, limbic versus brainstem. And this diagram will be made available to you and, and uh, it will be part of uh, the quiz for this particular structure uh, or this particular uh, um, part of the book or this module, you need to be able to identify and um, s define each one of these. And so, you know, the thalamus, what's the, the, the uh, key, uh, key component of the thalamus, and, it, and that is it relays, sorry for my S there, but it relays signals. The hypothalamus, what does it do? It controls maintenance. Um, this is a good example of um, not only um, uh, practicing your memory, but c connecting it with the various structures itself. So the amygdala and the hippocampus and the hypothalamus are all very much a part of the limbic system and then you have the reticular activating system and so forth. So, the, uh, and like I said, I'll make this, uh, this uh, diagram available to you and you can practice getting this uh, nailed down with each one. The pituitary isn't part of a system and neither is the thalamus, uh, but the hypothalamus, amygdala, and hippocampus is part of it and then of course the brain stem. And you, you need to be able to identify each one. What is this? spinal cord do, um, that was supposed to be an underline. What does the cerebellum do? Remember Ricky and his uh, hyperplasia and his inability to uh, smoothly move his head to the dish. Uh, these are each examples that help you to remember each one of them and, and laying out the entire system. You can locate each of uh, the brain areas, uh, the, uh, locate each of the brain areas and be able to define each. So locate and finally define. All right, and that brings us to the close of this particular module. This has probably got two or three uh, videos in it. I, I'm, I kind of am reducing them down to at least nine to ten minutes at most um, so that you can focus on the time that you have within that and then move on from there. One thing you might want to consider is actually uh, printing this out ahead of time um, for the video so that you can uh, uh, use it at, and fill it in as we move along um, through each video itself and each of these structures.